Yo, this is Zist. Today we're going to talk about how to take control of the mouse in Lyra. This is a fairly common question on the UE forums as well as on UDN. And really, it's just not possible to solve this problem unless you're very familiar with common UI and input flow in Lyra. I have some other tutorials that talk about big picture how input works in Lyra, and I recommend that you watch those and you have an idea. They're not necessary for this video, but it would be good anyway, just for you to know that. So Lyra in general, it doesn't really allow the user to use the mouse. Uh, the mouse is always captured and it's always being used for look input. And the only exception to that is when you open the menu, then it changes the input mode and the mouse is available, but it can't be used by the game. So if you want your mouse to be used by the game, this is how you do it. First is that, again, Lyra is based on common UI, so all those old UE4 tutorials on how to do this, ignore those. They are wrong. They are not applicable. They do not work for Lyra. For Lyra, what you need to do is you need to make your own method, and probably this is the C++ method, to set the input mode. Now, I'll show you some code for that. An optional second step is then to customize when you do set it, how does that actually take effect in Lyra? And so you may or may not need that secondary step. I'll show you how to do it in case you do. By default in Lyra, you, there is no mouse when you're playing the game. It's used for look input. But sometimes in your game, you may want to allow your user to use the mouse. For example, I want them to be able to click on this or click on that or whatever. And furthermore, I want control over where the mouse is when widgets are appearing on the screen. So you can see, for example, if I'm over here and I show my widget, then the mouse is like right over the middle of the default. And I can come down here and, you know, do whatever I want. I can click on this guy, tell him to emote. So Positioning of the mouse on the screen and whether or not the mouse is visible is not simple in Lyra, unless you understand how exactly it all works. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I've written some C++ code for this tutorial, and I'm publishing it all on GitHub. So here you can see is where I have it. Um, I've published this as a plugin. So for example, you can see this is the Lyra mouse tutorial plugin and in my default Lyra 5.2 project in Lyra plugins, I have copied this Lyra mouse tutorial plugin. So I've made some changes to Lyra in order to activate this, but the exact code that I'm using in this tutorial, including the action router, the blueprint function library and the widget C++, all of this is here on GitHub and I will link this in the video description. I've also put a tutorial up on my website and I'll add a link to this video because I'm making the video right now. But this gives you some basic information about what we're doing and why we're doing. So I recommend that you go through and look at the tutorial on the website in addition to this video and you'll understand pretty easily, hopefully, what we're doing here. So just to show you what I've done to base Lyra here for this example, I added some gameplay tags, I added some input actions, and I added mappings for those. And finally, I added two new abilities, show mouse and hide mouse, and I added that to the elimination ability set. So here I'm looking at the IMC for the default mouse keyboard. I've added this tutorial show mouse on the Y key and tutorial hide mouse on the U key. In the hero input then, I've mapped the show mouse to this new tag that I made and the hide mouse to this tag. And finally in the ability set, I have connected the show mouse tag to the show mouse ability and the hide mouse tag to the hide mouse ability. So long story short, this show mouse ability will run anytime I push the Y key and the hide mouse ability will run anytime I push the U key.
One other thing that I added is this widget, and I'll show you the code for this widget. Um, I added this to the elimination HUD, just so that it shows up over here and we can see what's the mouse capture state, what's the mouse lock state, is the mouse visible, is look input ignored, is move input ignored. And so this updates as we change the input config. This is the widget that I'm using just to show what happens with the mouse capture and mouse lock state. The widget itself is not going to be included in the code that I'm sharing. However, it's based on this existed input debug widget C++ class, and that's what does really all the work. So that C++ will be distributed. As far as the just look of this, it's very simple. Here you see it over here. We have a text box, a text box, and then we have a couple of check boxes. And those are being set at runtime if we look at the graph over here. Again, very simple, on active input mode changed event, which is fired by the C++ class, we're calling get UI input config data, which again is in the C++ class. And then we're just setting the text boxes and the check boxes based on the outputs of this function. So the guts of this, the really interesting part is C++, you can read that yourself. The part that actually turns this into visible whatever, nobody cares about that, but here it is. First, let's take a look at these abilities. Show mouse. Now, the first time we run through here, I'm going to show you just this part up here, which is how you might have tried to do it yourself. Show mouse cursor, yes. So when we want to show the mouse cursor, this ability activates. We set show mouse cursor true, and then we end the ability. So this part is not going to run, right? It's only running this top section. And the corresponding then, when we want to hide mouse, same thing, set show mouse cursor false. So this is the most obvious way that you might try to do this, but it doesn't work in Lyra. Here's what happens. When I push the Y key, boom, now you can see I have the mouse cursor. And as I'm moving the mouse around the screen, I'm still having look input. And yeah, it seems like at first glance, hey, it's working, right? But what if we want to fire the weapon? I push the, I click the mouse button. Oh, it fired. Let's push it again. Oh, it didn't fire that time. Let's push it again. It's not firing. Let's push it again. It's not firing. Now if I double click, I get one shot. Double click, one shot. So in this mode, it's not working the way you want. Yeah, I'm seeing the mouse. But look, now after shooting the weapon, after double clicking, my look input's not working anymore. And if I click once, no. If I double click, it fires. So clearly this is not at all what you wanted. So now let's try hiding the mouse. I'm gonna push the U key, and now the mouse is hidden. And I'm moving the mouse around the screen. Still, I have no look input at all. What if I click? No, that didn't work anything, or that didn't work. What if I click again? Yeah, now it's working. Click, click, click. So now it's shooting correctly and my look input is ignored but the transition back was not working so clearly that's bugged that's not how you want it to work now back in our show and hide abilities instead of using this show mouse we're going to use this function which is a c++ function that i've written and i've distributed the code to you so now activate ability is still going to print this message but then it's going to use our set input mode before it ends so compile save and we're going to do the same thing for the hide mouse we're going to use the set input mode compile save now we come back over here and we run it again and here we are everything's working good okay and now i'm going to push the y key now i have mouse and as i'm moving the mouse around you see there's no look input and in fact, up here, you can see mouse capture mode has changed to capture left mouse down and mouse lock mode has changed to not locked. So I can take this mouse and I can move it out of the display port. I can move it down here, over here. I can move it off to a different screen. So the mouse is not locked and it is captured when the left mouse button is down. So what does that mean? Let's click. Boom. It fires. Click. Fires. Click. Fires. So every click is registered in the viewport 
unless the mouse is off the viewport, in which case the mouse clicks are going over here. I move it back over here, click, fire, click, fire. So this is much better already. There is no look input, but there is still move input. So I can move around, I have ability inputs, I can smack these guys, I can, you know, I can use all my abilities, right? But my mouse is visible and I'm not having any look input. Now, if I push the U key, the mouse goes away and you see in the top right, it has changed. Mouse capture is back to capture plus initial mouse down and mouse lock mode is set to always. So now look, I'm, my look input works as I'm moving the mouse around. When I click, it's firing. So this is right back to default Lyra. And you can see how terrible I am at shooting. This is why I have to have the bots not kill me. In the show mouse ability here, we've seen that this works. When I'm calling set input mode and I'm saying I want a visible mouse, I want to ignore look input, but don't ignore move input. Well, why does that work? This is a blueprint function library, the code I'm distributing to you. It's zisted input mode statics is the name of this class and zisted set input mode is the method that we're interested in. So this code is here. And basically what this does is it has to get the action router. So the common UI action router is a local player subsystem. So we need to get it from the local player. So you pass in the player controller. From the player controller, we're then getting the local player and we're searching for the common UI action router local subsystem. And if any of that fails, we print an error log and we return. If we get this common UI action router, then what we do is we create a new config, a new input config. This is an FUI input config. And when we want our mouse to be visible, we have one type of config. And when we don't want our mouse to be visible, we have a different type of config. In either case, then we set, do we want to ignore look and move input? And then we have our new config. This is what our common UI input config should look like after we call this method. Once we compute that, we change the mouse cursor visibility on the player controller to be visible or not, depending on what we want. And then after we do that, we set the active UI input config on the common UI action router to be our new input config. And that's it. So this looks like a lot of code, but it's not really. It's just getting the action router a few lines to say, here's the new config we want, and then it's making that config active after it toggles the mouse visibility. By default, even after we've set the input configs the way that we want, so we push Y, and now we have our mouse. You see how the mouse is right in the middle of the screen? And I move it over here, and I push U, and when I push Y again, it's back in the middle of the screen. And I move it over to this side, push U, Push Y again, it's back in the middle of the screen. So what's happening here is that by default, every single time Common UI switches the mouse capture mode, it's putting the mouse back in the middle of the screen. And see, it's never going anywhere other than the middle of the screen when I show it. So if this is okay for you, then you're good to go. You don't care. If you want the mouse to be in a different position or if you want to be able to control it for example in my game i have a function where i can pop up a box anywhere on the screen and i want the mouse to be positioned over the box then this common ui functionality is quite annoying because it's always putting the mouse right in the middle of the screen when it becomes visible so to change that you also need to change the common ui action router and override its apply method. So I'll show you that. Uh, you can use that or don't use that depending on your game, but if you don't like this mouse always moving to the middle of the screen behavior, then the way that you fix that is by changing the way Common UI applies new input configs. In our input mode statics here, we're back in existed set input mode. The last thing we do down here is we tell the common UI action router to set active UI input config with our new config. 
Well, what that does, if we click on that, all that does is call apply UI input config. And here's the default implementation of the common UI action router base apply UI input config. It does a bunch of stuff. You should read through this and understand what it's doing and why. Maybe it works great for you. It did not work great for me. And the reason is because of this stuff here, it centers the cursor in the middle of the screen all the time. And I dislike that for my game. So for Lyra, it works great. It may work great for your game. I do not like this at all. So there are other problems. It does not switch the move input or look input unless the equal operator fails and the equal operator is not good. It does not consider whether look input or move input is ignored. So you can't change these values unless you also change the mouse capture state. To me, it's just, this is not good code, okay? This was all like prototypey code and Epic is working on this a lot. This is an experimental module. I fully expect there are gonna be massive changes to this method. For my purposes, I don't like this method. I didn't wanna use it. Here I have made my own base or, or child class. So existed UI action router, which derives from common UI action router base, and I'm overriding the apply UI input config method. So if we look at over here, this is a complete override. I am not calling the base class at all. I am not using the base apply UI input config implementation. It doesn't work for my game. So I have pulled a lot of that stuff out and I've put it here to have it work the way I want it to work. Now, again, this might be optional for you. You can try not creating this class, not overriding this method and see if that gives you the results you want. And if so, great. But if that mouse centering is annoying to you or if there are other things about the way that it's applying the UI config that you don't like, here's how you change that. You override this method, you do not call the base, and then you just change the input configs the way you want here. So what is happening? We are checking that we have all the data that we need to make this happen, or we're erroring and we're returning. We're then checking to see, have has anything actually changed? And here, for example, you can see I specifically am checking to see has ignore look changed, has ignore move change, and these are things that the base class does not do. And if there are no changes, that's it, we're out. And if there are changes, well then let's make the changes. So down here, this is all the work necessary to change Unreal Engine inputs to be the way that I want it to work in my game. So you can change this entirely to work for your game how you want it to. You know, this is where it goes. So again, you should try without creating this, uh, your own action router. But if you do need to do it, this is how you do it. So that is how to take control of the mouse in Lyra. If this video doesn't suck, please consider liking and subscribing. Maybe share it with someone else who might find it interesting. Thank you. Have a nice day.